everybody, it's Rose from Sleepopolis and today I'm here to talk about a sleep disorder called restless leg syndrome. In this video you'll find out what restless leg syndrome is, what the symptoms are, and how it's treated. We'll also talk about causes of the disorder and how doctors diagnose it. And by the way, if you'd like to check out my full article on this subject, just go to sleepopolis.com and search for restless leg syndrome. And while you're there, take a look at my other articles on sleep, including coffee naps, lucid dreaming, and how mental health affects your sleep, among many others. Before we go further, I just want to say that this video is meant to be informative, but it shouldn't take the place of advice and supervision from your healthcare provider. If you feel you may be suffering from a sleep disorder or medical condition, please see a trained professional. By the way, if you have any questions during this video, feel free to post them below and I'll be glad to answer them. Now let's get started. So what is restless leg syndrome? Restless leg syndrome is a common sleep disorder that affects about 10% of the U.S. population. It's also known as willis eckbaum disease, named after two doctors, Sir Thomas Willis and Carl Axel Eckbaum, who practiced about 300 years apart, but both brought a lot of recognition to the disease. Restless leg syndrome is considered a sleep disorder and a neurological disorder because it involves the brain. It affects women more than men and can begin at any age. When the disorder starts in childhood, it's known as early onset restless leg syndrome. Because restless leg syndrome follows a circadian rhythm, the symptoms tend to occur at night and can prevent or interrupt sleep. The symptoms can occur anytime you're sitting still, like a plane or a car ride or when lying down. About 80% of restless leg syndrome sufferers also have periodic limb movement disorder, which is twitching and jerking of the limbs that occur about every 15 to 40 seconds during the night. I asked Dr. Daniel Baroni, neurologist and sleep specialist at Weill Cornell Medicine, to explain the primary symptoms of this disorder. So restless leg syndrome is what we call a clinical diagnosis, and there's four main criteria that lets us know if somebody has this or not. There's so, the so-called urge criteria, that's U-R-G-E. So the U stands for urge. These people have an urge to kind of move their legs throughout the night or, or before they go to sleep. The R stands for rest. So when they're at rest, these symptoms come on. G is the corollary to that, which is when they get up and go, the symptoms go away. The E mm -hmm. stands for evening, evening uh, preference. So most times that translates to as these people get into bed or as they're getting ready for bed at nighttime, the symptoms come on where they feel like typically in the lower half of their legs, they have a sensation of feeling like they're very restless, the, some people describe it as kind of a tugging sensation or a creepy crawly feeling or something of that nature that's very, very uncomfortable and it makes it hard for them to fall asleep. The sensations are different for everyone, but are described as itchy, throbbing, a pulling sensation, achy, crawling, feelings like pins and needles or electric shocks. Feelings can change, fluctuate, or even disappear, but without treatment, they tend to recur. There are two types of restless leg syndrome idiopathic or secondary. Idiopathic means it's genetic or has an undetermined cause, and secondary means it's triggered by something else. I asked Dr. Baroni to talk about what causes restless leg syndrome. So restless leg syndrome has a lot of different potential causes, sometimes it's genetic. Okay, so a lot of times you'll hear patients will say, oh, my mom, my grandma had this. Uh, probably the most common thing that we see, at least something that's actionable, uh, is young menstruating women, okay? They sometimes have anemia as a result of blood loss and the resulting low iron can lead to these symptoms and, and simply by treating that with iron supplementation, over time the symptoms can, can improve. Other conditions are, are just chronic medical illnesses can sometimes do it, uh, diabetes that's not fully treated, uh, neuropathy, okay, which is nerve, nerve damage. Uh, certain medications can bring it on. One of the biggest things that I see that sometimes patients will do uh, without knowing this is uh, taking um, antihistamines. So things like NyQuil and z right? What those do, those, the antihistamine, the diphenhydramine within that can actually make restless leg symptoms worse. And what's, what's interesting about that is people will take those substances with the effort of trying to get sleep, trying to get to sleep, but in actuality, it's having the reverse effect. We've talked about the symptoms and the possible causes of restless leg syndrome, so now let's talk about how it's diagnosed. There's no specific medical test for this disorder, so it depends on the reporting of symptoms. To get a clinical diagnosis requires a few things. 
uncomfortable sensations and a strong impulse to move the limbs. It gets worse at night and worse with rest and causes a feeling of restlessness. You wanna to toss and turn, pace and massage your legs. A doctor won't diagnose the disorder if symptoms start while walking. Symptoms of the disorder have to start at rest to qualify as restless leg syndrome. So how does restless leg syndrome impact sleep? Well, the disorder occurs at night, so it can be difficult to fall and stay asleep. This can cause daytime sleepiness, decreased productivity, diminished mood, along with many other symptoms of sleep deprivation. Now let's discuss what can be done to relieve this disorder. I asked Dr. Baroni to tell us about the latest and most effective treatments for restless leg syndrome. The mainstay of treatment for restless leg syndrome is typically treating the underlying cause if we can find it, right? So that goes back to this whole low iron, low ferritin situation. If, if iron is low, then one, you got to figure out why that is, you know, if somebody is, is having blood loss. But, uh, but for restless legs, it's, it's replacing that. Okay, sometimes you see that in patients who are vegetarian. You know, they may not be getting enough iron in their diet. You know, supplementing can, can help. That aside, the biggest, the biggest question is, is reducing the symptoms. And we have various medications, various groups of medications that we use for that. Uh, the so-called dopamine agonists or the dopamine medications, that's uh, Requip and Mirapex. Uh, those can be useful. Those are considered first line, although in clinical practice, I tend to... to Gear to, uh, veer towards uh, medications like gabapentin, which tend to be a little bit safer long-term. Here at Sleepopolis, we get a lot of questions about restless leg syndrome, and here are some of the most common. Can certain exercises help symptoms of restless leg syndrome? Maybe. Some studies show that a combination of moderate aerobic exercise and lower body strength training can help relieve symptoms of RLS up to 50%. Strenuous exercise can worsen symptoms though, so be careful not to overdo it. Are there things that make RLS worse? Yes, caffeine can trigger RLS symptoms, as can other stimulants like cold medications and nicotine. Alcohol, sugar, and other foods that raise blood sugar can cause symptoms to get worse in some people. Last question, what kinds of home remedies exist for RLS? Well, there are a few things you can do to help relieve symptoms. Warm baths, warm or cold packs, or massages can help soothe tense muscles. Relaxation techniques like yoga and meditation can lower stress, reduce symptoms, and make falling asleep easier. So there you have it, everything you need to know about restless leg syndrome. If you'd like to dig even deeper into this disorder, check out my article link below. And finally, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. Until next time, see you later, Sleepopolites.